This is episode 47 of Kooks on Kooks. Special shout out to Ziggy Ansa. That was his number Ziggy in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jess and I are back from LA. We it's had a great here. time despite the outcome of the game. It is cold here. It was it was still a fun game and we'll talk about that. We we will talk about yes. that. A lot's to say. But about a that. loss is a loss and losses aren't fun. So. No. Quote of the week this week comes from Doc Rivers. Average players want to be left alone, good players want to be coached, great players want to be told the truth. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I mean, no, I think that you know, the average when good players don't want to change, but the great players want to know what they can do to turn it around and We'd be fools to think that our basketball team doesn't kind of need to do a little 180 right now. So, like we said, we're going to talk about what happened in L.A. It was a good atmosphere. It was really cool to see the BYU intro video and hear our lineups get read at the Staples Center. It was. I mean, the the atmosphere was really great. Um, Big environment, big arena. L.A. Lakers logo on the floor. All the jerseys hanging in the rafters. It was cool. I'm sure they loved it. Really cool. And for us, it was really cool to meet up with Jake Welch, who is at BYU All Blue. We've been dying to meet him in person. He's as funny as he is online, which (laughs) is rare. (laughs) But uh, we talked with him about what went wrong and what went right. We'll just get right into that. We are here at the Staples Center. We're with Jake Welch. Welcome. He's been on the show before via Skype. This is much more exciting. Yeah, we're live. As exciting as anything can yeah, be right. after what we just witnessed. So we're at the Staples Center where BYU just lost to USC. What was the final score? I or tried to block it's it out of my 91 memory. 91 to 84. 84. We're going to coach from the couch. Yes. Follow Jake. He's at BYU All Blue. We promote his Twitter like every week on the show awesome. if you watch. So. They're really loyal. They're great, great people. Loyal, <laughs> strong. And yeah, true. loyal, strong. And true. <laughs> okay, All so right. let's get into it. Let's start with what went wrong. We can end on what went right. Um, yeah. Who wants to start? I think Jess has got a lot to say about <laughs> what went wrong. Coach Tyler. <laughs> well, I think the easiest thing to say is that the guard play in the first half was not good. the easy one. Yeah. Dang it, Jess. I know. I was, hey, you let me go first. <laughs> but when you have no points from Nick Emery and Teacher House in your first half, mm-hmm. that no is not going to win. Yeah. Zero points from either of well, them. And the, it was the zone defense from USC mm-hmm. that really shut them right. out. And I was, you would think that good players, that, I mean, generally they're decent outside shooters, but the two of them, they can slash, like, they would be able to cut up a zone easily, but they were just yeah. completely dumbfounded by it. Well, for me, what went wrong, let's go with turnovers. We did turn the ball over 16 times, and LJ Rose, our starting point guard, is accountable for five of those 16 turnovers, and he had five points. So I don't want your turnovers to be canceling out your points. you got to handle the ball well. In the first half especially, we had a lot of sloppy passes just right into traffic that ended up being turnovers. Yeah, and I, th- I mean, the biggest thing for me was... Maybe we can talk about the offense and turnovers. I think the, the biggest thing, I mean, that offense led to easy offense for USC. Yeah, easy. There a lot of, like, turnovers at the top of the key where they were just giving breakaway two-on-ones. So many times during the first half, I was like, man, these guys, like, USC had so many easy opportunities because of BYU's really sloppy offense. But, yeah. I mean, when we can't play defense ourselves, we're giving up 91 points a game again. It's just like I watch college basketball games where the, they're in the 60s. That was my thing. Okay, right. defense. Just def- defense. like bad, slop, sloppy offense that turned into easy offense for them and just defense. I want to put in a plug for assists as well. We only had nine Let's assists. Let's put in, in a game, plug for assists. A lot lower. Nine, nine assists on 84 points for our team is not how you want to play. Yeah, so nine assists on 30 made baskets, which is just. I think our magic number, we had a magic number for assists last season. I think it was 18, so we're halfway there. Good heavens. Uh huh, yeah. yeah. Well, there was a lot of times where we were forcing, I mean, a lot of good, if we're going to move into things that went yes, well. Yes, yes, let's do that. I mean, I think something that did, I mean, Eric Mika played a fantastic game. He did. A little bit better job of feeding into the post. Like, Kyle Davis also had a, had a nice game. Yeah. There were good opportunities, I felt like, that we had in getting the ball to our big guys down low. But there are also so many times where there's still those forced passes. Mm-hmm. And there's like, you know, we try to get in there, we try and, you know, throw it in and jam it in there, where it's like, okay, give it to him a little bit further outside. Yeah. And Eric Mika can catch it 18 feet and work his way in. It's good. Okay, Coach Tyler. What went right? Yeah, this is harder. <laughs> I feel like what I said and what went right went into what went wrong, but I'm bad at this. Go ahead. Okay, what went right? I liked seeing the different lineups in the second half, and that was kind of due to injuries and foul trouble and whatever, but at one point in the second half, you had Eric Mika uh-huh. and Kyle Davis and Brandon Shaw there. Yep. And then later, you had, like, Zach Frampton and Steven, Steven Bayo, Bayo and Colby Leifson. saw a lot of Colby Leifson tonight. And Gwyn. So... And that, that kind of worked for the for the full-court press we were doing. Yeah. We got some turnovers. We were able to cut the lead a little bit. 
but at the same time, it was, you know, it wasn't enough. But it was something different, and I like to see Coach Rose try something different in a game where your starting guards are not playing very well. And we were, what, down 16? Mm -hmm. And then with, like, a Stephen Bayo and Zach Frampton, it's like, these guys, I mean, like, they're not... I was like, okay, the game's over. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, when the coach always puts those in, I was like, all right, this is our white flag. Yeah, but they made it competitive. Like, it was interesting in the last three minutes of the game. And so the fact that they made that jump and it wasn't like, okay, we're seceding, they're giving up, they made plays. Yeah. There was, like, there was enough from those guys to put us back in the game. So, for my thing that went right, this is going to sound really moral victory ish, and we kind of already <laughs> touched on it, but like, we didn't give up. <laughs> I mean, it was those different lineups. We didn't quit. Like, like, yeah. We got back in that game. That's true. It was, I mean, it was we, ha we had a chance there with a couple minutes left. Well, to just kept really, three with like three minutes left. So, I think. at the point where we could have just laid down and taken it, I mean, TJ and Nick, which is very encouraging, both came up big. They came up big too late. I yeah. want them to come up big sooner. But the fact that they, they kept shooting and they made threes. Both TJ and Nick had threes with under a couple minutes to go. So, I like that they're not just getting frustrated and shutting down. They're trying to win. They tried yeah. to win until the end. Mm -hmm. I thought Yoli played, had a fairly decent game. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I was for, wondering for, why he didn't get more minutes in the second half. He kind of sat for a I long mean, while. He, has, he had some, there were just some interesting points with that really, and then again, Braden Shaw as well. Yeah. I'm encouraged by what I see out of him because I remember so many times we get these big guys. Mm -hmm. They get like, you know, maybe like a James Anderson, you know, back from like 2011. And like some other big guys that like, they would come in and then just look completely terrified. Brainshaw has, true. like, yeah. he has confidence out there. He does. Like, he looks like, He's got some you know what, I belong in this basketball game. I'm yeah. not going to be afraid to take it up and, you know, go at the basket. This is the thing. Our team's probably not going to make it the NCAA tournament this year. Can we say that? I think that's fair. I'm not saying that Unless yet. We like, we're, we're struggling early. But as it looks right now, no. It doesn't look great. Okay. It doesn't look great. Probably a nice NIT run. Okay. It'll be fun. Sure, we'll let you have that statement for now. Yeah. Is there a but? But next year, <laughs> next year. You have to think really hard about I mean, that. yeah, no, 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 no. Next year, I think we'll, we'll be set up for, for a nice run. I was, telling, I was telling you earlier, I saw an NBA scout in the stands, mm -hmm. and uh, I tried to get some information out of him. Uh, he said absolutely nothing to me. Like, the only thing that he asked us was, oh, is that Tyler Haas' little brother? And we're like, yes, TJ Haas. That is Tyler Haas' little brother. And he's like, oh, okay. See you from LA. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Talk of the Town this week, we are starting with news about our bowl game, which is that we are playing Wyoming in the Poinsettia Bowl on December 21st in San Diego against Wyoming, who did not win their conference. They lost to San Diego State in a close one in Laramie for the conference championship. So they're actually coming in losing their last three or four, but they've had kind of a roller coaster of a season. Some big wins, some big losses, triple overtime game against UNLV. It's been all over the place. Beat Boise State by two, something uh -huh. we couldn't do. Nope. They beat Utah State as well, so I don't know if that's saying much, but but they have one of the you know best running backs um, as well, ran all over the conference, so some good history there. They hate us. They so hate us. Twitter should be fun. <laughs> At least there's that. We'll yeah. we'll probably have to do a mean tweet. No, um, I'm sure we will. But I noticed, so they officially announced that we were playing Wyoming. We kind of knew that we'd be playing the loser of the uh, Mountain West Champ Conference Championship, but it wasn't for sure. But they announced it, and everyone was calling Wyoming the Pokes, and I was like, what? Why? <laughs> so you can judge me if uh, you know and you just think I'm dumb, but if you don't know, apparently Cowpoke is a nickname for a cowboy, and so Poke is short for Cowpoke, so the more you know. There you go. Anyway, um, ESPN Stats Info gave or is giving BRU a 78% chance to win. So they're one of the three most likely teams to win their bowl game. So Mississippi State is at 82%, BRU at 78 and then Air Force at 77 I thought it was really interesting that there were only three teams that had a 75% chance or higher and that we were one of them. No pressure. It's fine. I was just saying, yes, my expectations are low. And I think everyone should have low expectations. Our, their teams had been on a roller coaster ride. So was ours. We don't know what to expect with injuries. We hope Jamal's going to play. Who really knows? It's going to be Tanner's first start of the year. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I feel like because of that, people will have higher expectations. Oh, they will. Especially the people that have been so clamoring for Tanner. give Tanner a break. Goodness, because I don't, I think that's why I'm if so nervous learned, about Tanner all of a sudden, because I don't want him to disappoint people. If we've learned anything about basketball so far this year. 
Lower your expectations. <laughs> also in football news, we have added a game to our schedule, which is great because it brings us to 13 games for next year, which is woohoo! More BYU football. More BYU football. This one is going to be before. So kickoff was going to be against LSU in Houston, but now it's going to be against Portland State at home. Warm up game. Yeah. You know what? Portland State. It, like, it's not going to be just a joke of a game. I think the guys will still have to prepare, um, but it's not going to be LSU. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, so get those jitters out, shake some rust off before you head to Houston. Uh, I was pretty nervous about the prospect of opening against LSU. I don't yeah, know about you. Same. And it's so fun to have a game on August 26th. That's earlier than pretty much anyone else starts to play. So, suckers, we get football before you get football. <sighs> a little bit earlier that means fall camp is a little bit earlier everything is a little bit earlier so that's nice but look at that schedule i mean there's some good stuff and i also want to say we have a really good bye week in there in in september so is that september 29th no september 23rd we've got a bye just after that stretch of lsu utah wisconsin (laughs) always open them up brutal (laughs) so yeah that that's nice to keep that bye week right there this is from tanner mangum's instagram and his caption is from Jay Biebs, he calls him. Always. Justin Bieber. His I'm boy. I'm not so sure about this, but I'm sure Mary loves it. I do. <laughs> it says, because I'll take you home to mama. And this is his new girlfriend with him in Eagle, in Idaho. I think so. we both have a lot to say about this, and we won't for purposes of remaining nothing. somewhat professional. Other than they're very cute and also he-shaped. George Hill, the jazz point guard, uh, posted on Facebook that he was at the BYU-USU game that was at the Vivint Sprint Home Arena where he plays to support the little bro, Eric Mika. So, okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. More of this. We're so sorry, TJ Haas. But this is funny. there's more of this. Um, this is a tweet. If Smeagol played basketball, he'd wear number 30 for BYU. That's our second Smeagol reference that we've seen of the season. Yeah. I'm sure there have been more. We're going to have to do another (laughs) tweets from last night. This was just like another glimpse. So don't forget to be sending us these. But TJ, we love you. Sorry, dude. Gavin Gwynn posted this on Instagram. He's a California kid. I think he, we know he played at Riverside. He's from California and he posted this picture with his parents mini little Devin Gwynn and what did he say in the caption? He says, I'm grateful my parents taught me about hard work. They took me to a Clippers game back in the day. Years later, I'm back to play on that same court. That's some cool nostalgia. That is pretty cute. Um, And I think he was doing that as part of the hashtag light the world advent calendar because I'm pretty sure that day was honor your parents. So shout out to Dev for keeping that up while he was traveling with the team. (laughs) Good work, Devin. Uh, Okay, the other thing we have to talk about our new basketball uniforms, the all black, which I think we saw on Twitter that that the last time we had all black was like in the 90s. Yeah. So it's been a long time since we've had all black. And I think our verdict is that we like them. Dude, I love those. I saw someone say that the lettering could be white with um, royal stitching and it might be easier to read, but that didn't really bother me. I mean, we were there. Yeah, I didn't at all. I thought the fronts of them looked really good. Yeah, they do. the white numbers and the royal lettering. That black and royal combo, though, is fire. So someone who wasn't in L.A. That would be Tom Homo because he is all over the place. But this is a cool picture of him sitting in the rock section watching on a laptop the men's basketball game before that women's volleyball game started. So, very cool. He's just sitting there with all these students crowded on the laptop watching the game. The man does it all. But for our last thing in Talk of the Town, um, this tweet, I mean, the tweet's fine. He wants you to follow his teammate, teammate, whoever it is. But what we thought was funny about it was this teammate gave him a nickname, which is Air Mormon. What do you think? Try it on for size for Kyle Collinsworth. Air Mormon. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably give that nickname to, like, Eric Mika. Or, yeah. or your child. Yo, because he is Mormon now. That's true. So, yeah, but... Uh, that's funny. But no, I, I can see where that's coming from. We'll see if it sticks. So we're going to do another Cougs and Culture segment. We haven't yes. done one of these in a while. Mm-mm. But, you know, it's the beginning of December, so everyone's doing their gift guides. So we figured we should do one for a few of the guys 
on the football teams, basketball teams, just various athletes. And we're going to turn this into a contest as well. That's so right. we'll get to that at the end, but first we'll tell you. We just chose um, five BYU athletes, coaches, administrators to give gifts to, and then we want you guys to jump in. But first, <laughs> we started with Tanner Mangum, who we just showed in Talk of the Town with a Justin Bieber That's lyric right. as his caption, and he was tweeting about listening to Jay Beeb's Christmas album the other day. <laughs> oh so uh, the perfect gift for Tanner Mangum we're gonna go with Justin Bieber tickets. Now we're not buying these for him, but no, you know, no, no. you well don't actually because it's an NCAA <laughs> violation. <laughs> so this is just all in good fun. Right. But Justin Bieber tickets. So uh, Justin Bieber announced Monday that he's doing a stadium tour. Tickets go on sale on Friday, and he's gonna be going to the Rose Bowl in California. And I think to Mile High Stadium in Denver. So one of those could work if they weren't smack dab in the middle of fall camp, which uh, they yeah, are. That's not gonna... Sorry, Tanner. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. Dab and Gwen <laughs> thought that we could get him a, a karaoke machine <laughs> because earlier, I think before the season started, Nick Emery um, talked about how Davin was the best locker room singer. I think he said that voice. on multiple occasions. I so... think multiple people have said that too. <laughs> Because they did that thing on yeah, media where they asked, you. yeah, asked several people who's the best singer, and they all said Davin. So he needs a karaoke machine so he can really just carry it around with him, probably. That's true. Next is Jamal Williams, our favorite running back, who tweeted out that he got a score of 230 in bowling. Like, dang, dude! 300's max, so that's pretty good. Because heaven forbid someone just be talented at one thing. I mean, when you're mega talented like that, you're just good at everything, right? Including bowling. Including bowling. So our gift suggestion for him is uh, a custom pair of BYU bowling shoes. And he's going to graduate soon, so you can get him those and not be violating the NCAA. (laughs) After he graduates. Someone design him some. Nick Emery and Peyton Dastrup. We've this is about a this combined a lot one. Recently, this is combined. We are not getting them razors, as Jake Welch suggested. No, on our Twitter, no shaved heads. Um, no, but we're gonna get them a gift card to the best barber in town. Maybe we know the one who did Kyle Collinsworth's. I can't remember his street name, cuts. but we have his. Yes, yeah, Street Cuts. That's who it was. That's right. We're gonna get you a gift card to there, boys. <laughs> Should we just get one for the whole team while we're at it? This one Last is special. One, yeah. So we were trying to think who else could we get a gift for, and first one that came to mind was Tom Homo, our fearless leader. That's right. And we figured he could probably use a vacation because... Where are we going to send him? Somewhere the Caribbean and with no cell phone service and somewhere relaxing. But that man has worked the hardest, I think, in all of BYU sports because, I mean, thinking of this, in this last year, we've had, you know, basketball in their season. He's on the selection committee for the NCAA tournament. He's been dealing with Big 12, Big 12 expansion drama. for the last year. And then just with the, you know, hiring of Coach Satake and the new staff there, and then just, you know, all the sports that we've had going on, women's soccer, women's volleyball. It's everything. an endless list. Yeah, and we were even saying, when end. would we even send him on this vacation? Because there's always a sport in season. We'd have to, like, but force him onto a plane Anyone deserves a vacation. It's Tom. So moving on into how you can enter, you kind of get the idea of what we just did. We picked some people chose the best gifts from them. We want you to choose the best gifts. It can be any of the athletes we said. It can be any of the other ones. Um, we Coaches. Would, yeah. It could be Coach Tom Homo, any other. Ty. Yeah. Ty Detmer probably needs some more stuff for his deer ranch if you can think of anything good. <laughs> that would have been a good one. Anybody related to BYU sports and a gift you could get them. That's what we want. Yes. In order to enter, you have to be following us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and you have to like our Facebook page, and then we just want you to tweet out and tag us. Tag us in a tweet. We recommend that you do one football player and one basketball player at least. Um, You can do one. That's fine, too. Or if you just have a coach in mind or administrator or whatever. Um, And then, yeah, tag us with your tweets, and um, you will have until Monday next week by 4 p.m. to enter. Utah time, yeah. Yep, and we'll announce those on our show next week. Yes, so enter, and here's the basketball that you can win. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Just got it signed at FanFest, and it's got most of your starting lineup in there. As for what is next, we have a couple basketball games coming up. The first one being Wednesday, tomorrow at 7 p.m. That one's going to be versus Weber State at the Marriott Center or on BYU TV if you can't make it, and wear white if you're going to that. And then Saturday... At 8 p.m. at the Marriott Center again, we are playing Colorado. Big game. 
big game, Pac-12 game. If you remember last year's game at Colorado, that's one where we dug ourselves into a big hole early. Almost and got we out of it. All the way back and had chances to win, but sounds couldn't pull it familiar. Out. So hopefully we play better this week. I mean, that's this is a game that we almost need to win for our, our resume since we've lost to Valpo and, and to USC. USC and to UVU. So, yeah, people have been that saying out. that in order for us to, to be worth looking at in March, we need to win two out of three out of Illinois, Colorado, and USC. So we lost USC, so two chances are coming up here. Yeah. So show up to that Colorado game, be loud on ESPN2, some good national coverage. Wear white again. Our sponsors this week are first the Punch Heard Around the World. <laughs> and I don't know if this is something that we celebrate, but it is the one year anniversary, I guess, of the time that Nick Emery kind of punched <laughs> Brandon Taylor in the Utah game. And our second sponsor is Chris Pratt for repping the Y. It's not Photoshopped. Your eyes yeah, are not deceiving real. you. It is Chris Pratt in a BYU t shirt. What our goal will be to one day have him on to tell that story. Oh, yes. Yeah, if someday. you're listening, Chris Pratt. Come on our show. <laughs> May you always stay loyal to the white and blue for Jess. I'm Mary. We'll see you next week.